Hi, Katie here from Vibe, and welcome to our special Vibe Academy video on how to do presentations with Vibe. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to provide an agenda for what we're going to cover today on this video. I'm going to do a little bit of an overview about what Vibe is, then walk you through the main things to think about when you're considering using Vibe to use with PowerPoint or presentations, the top four options for how you can use PowerPoint um, with your Vibe board, some tips for using Vibe with video conferencing application, and then end it with some tips for remote collaboration. So let's jump in and get started. First and foremost, what is Vibe? So we were founded in 2016. We're a small but mighty company headquartered in Seattle, Washington, and we have a global team with four offices worldwide. Our hardware is this big giant 55 inch touchscreen television. And then we also make our own uh, software, which is cloud-based, it's collaborative. You can use it on other devices. You can collaborate with your team from anywhere in the world. We like to think of ourselves as agnostic. So you can screencast from any device. Our operating system is Android, so we integrate with over 70 different third-party applications. Um, and first and foremost, we try to be affordable. So the board itself is only $29.99, including free shipping in the US. And we also have this optional stand that's an additional 500, or you could get your own stand or even wall mount it um, to save some space. So the four main ways that you can use PowerPoint um, with your board. And so I know there's other types of presentations, but most of our customers ask me about PowerPoint. So that's what we'll be focusing on today. So the factors over here on the left-hand side of the screen are what you should consider when thinking about how you wanna present and use PowerPoint and Vibe. The first uh, point is control. So do you wanna be controlling your slides and presentation from the Vibe board? or do you wanna utilize your computer? You know, some people feel more comfortable controlling something that they're familiar with. Um, do you wanna annotate easily on every single slide and then be able to export that after the fact? In that case, I would definitely recommend option one. With options two, three, and four, there is an annotation option. So I'll take you through short demos of all of these options and you can see what the annotation looks like for that. Another factor to consider is split screen. So do you wanna be able to split your screen with maybe the whiteboard or YouTube app um, and your presentation on the other side of the screen? Most of these will support that. The one exception is HDMI. Do you have animations and videos in your PowerPoint? A lot of people that love PowerPoint love those transitions or you know fade in, fade out, or maybe they have videos in the PowerPoint itself. Unfortunately, option one does not support importing those type of things. Once you import it into the canvas, it becomes almost like a PDF, so those will go away. So if those are important to you, I would recommend some of these other options which will support those things. Um, clickers. So most of these will support clickers. With Vibe, you do need to have a clicker that has a USB dongle because we don't support Bluetooth in the device itself. Last but not least, if you don't have an Office 365 subscription, option two is not going to work for you um, because using the PowerPoint application on the board does require that type of subscription and for you to log into your account. So these are just kind of all the things to keep in mind when figuring out which of these options will work best for your use case and your needs. Let's dive into each one of these in a little bit more detail. So for importing into the canvas, this is my number one recommended way to do presentations with Vibe. That's what I'm using right now. So you can either import from cloud storage. I'm gonna go over to Google Drive and find the Google slide that I wanna import. And keep in mind that the type of file that you can import will depend on the source that it's coming from. So if you're importing from Google Drive, you can do Google Slides. If you're importing from OneDrive or Dropbox, you can do PowerPoint. And then for everything in between, what I recommend is save your PowerPoint as a PDF and you can import it from our web application, which is available at app.vibe.us, uh, or any of these options will work with a PDF. 
Once you've imported into the canvas, each canvas can support up to 100 pages. So you can even mix it up and add a blank page to whiteboard. Um, you have access to all of the whiteboarding features if you wanted to use the laser pointer to draw attention to something, um, if you want to highlight or mock something up, you can use any of, or even sticky notes, you can use any of the whiteboarding features. I should also point out that this toolbar can be adjusted. So if you're left-handed or prefer to work on this side of the screen, you can move this toolbar to wherever is most handy for you. You can also easily reorder or jump back and forth to different pages. So I can just drag and drop if I change my mind about something, or if I need to delete a page, I just go to manage and delete the pages that I don't need. What's also great about this is all of the annotations that you're working on this will automatically save, and then you can export this entire canvas as a PDF, which is a really great takeaway um, for your audience. So you can say like, don't worry about taking notes, I'm gonna send you everything, including the whiteboard, um, as a PDF, as a follow-up. Um, also, customers that are doing a lot of presentations might wanna consider our Vibe Active Stylus. Um, this is a smart pen that you can use to switch between a uh, pen and eraser, and you can also use to advance or go back on the pages. So if you're using option one and you love presenting, um, I highly recommend the Vibe Stylus. And then, um, you know, if you didn't put in extra blank pages and you want to start whiteboarding, you can just pinch in because the canvas is infinite. So if you get excited about a concept and you want to like draw and sketch things out to the side, you can do that there. And when you export, everything that's on the canvas will be exported and included in that. Um, last but not least, it supports split screen. So if you need to bring up um, YouTube, for instance, like let's say you had a video you typically like to play, you can pull up that application, um, do it side by side in a split screen, or drag it over to one side as you play the video and maybe take some notes over here. And then when you're done, you can just minimize that application. So a lot of different functionality available in this option. The disadvantages of course are those slide transitions um, and that we don't support importing videos, but there's a few different workarounds, either play video from your computer or use the YouTube app to play videos. Option two is to use the PowerPoint application. So if you are more comfortable with using the PowerPoint application and all the features there, um, you can open this up. You do need to log into your Office 365 account, and then you can open um, a presentation from either your OneDrive account or from a USB. Can't avoid the pop-ups. <laughs> um, so once you have this launched, I can go full screen. Um, I can go into slideshow mode as I'm going through my presentation. And then I'm gonna be able to control this from the board itself. So I can swipe to go to other slides on here. If you wanna annotate, you're gonna swipe up from the bottom to display the toolbar. And then you're gonna tap that pencil icon down here at the bottom. You'll notice that this annotation toolbar comes up. So this is a little bit different from the whiteboarding toolbar, but you still have all the main things that you need. So you can draw attention to something, you can highlight when you're doing the annotation feature, and you can also use the laser pointer. Now, when you're using the annotation mode, what it's doing is taking a screenshot of what's on the screen. So we're not actually marking up this presentation. And when you're done, you're gonna need to either X out of it, or you can leverage this tool to take a screenshot. So if I wanted to save a note or something that I was working on here, I can save that to the whiteboard canvas and then come back to it. So it's gonna save that right there. Um, and then let's go back over to the, to the presentation. So here's where that screenshot came in. I can then resize it or move it to wherever I might need it. So the key advantages of using the PowerPoint application, you can use the transitions and animations on PowerPoint. You can do split screen. I have a lot of professors that like to do PowerPoint on one side and the Canvas app on the other. And you can also control the presentation from Vibe or utilize that active stylus. Disadvantages is that over 365 subscription and that the annotations are not gonna save as you're going. So not the best if you like to write on everything, um, but definitely can work. Oops. Third option, screencasting to Vibe. So Vibe supports screencasting from many different devices. It's gonna depend on what type of device what you can use for screencasting. So for these three options over here, 
These do not support touchback. So that means if you're using AirPlay, Chromecast, or HDMI, you're gonna be um, controlling the presentation from your device. If you're using eShare, which is our recommended method for um, screencasting, that enables touchback. So eShare is the only option that you can use to wirelessly cast and then manipulate your presentation from the Vibe board. I'm gonna show you how this works. So this is looking at my uh, keynote that's available on my Mac. I can come up here and hit play and go into full screen on here and go to different um, presentations, uh, go to different slides on this. If I wanna start annotating content that's on my computer screen, I'm gonna swipe up, tap that pencil icon down here, and then I can kind of annotate, draw, similar to the annotation feature that's available on PowerPoint. And then if you wanted to do a split screen when you're screencasting, you can swipe up, oops, that went to that, go to the launch center, and then I can just drag it on top of whatever application I wanna do in a split screen mode. So that could be YouTube, it could be the Vibe Canvas, but I can do that kind of side by side with the content being displayed on my computer. And we can also adjust that. So going back to the Vibe Canvas, the advantages of screencasting is it's gonna support your animations and transitions. It will support split screen mode. You just swipe up to go to that launch center. With eShare, you can also control your presentation from Vibe. Um, and then the other option, uh, if you're not using eShare, you'll just control it from your device. Disadvantage is again, annotations, but you can save screenshots and videos might have a slight lag depending on your Wi-Fi connection. So that's where the fourth option can be handy. You know, if you're doing a live webinar or presentation, you might wanna use an HDMI cable. So you would attach an HDMI cable to your, uh, to HDMI in on the back of the board. You might need a um, adapter, um, depending on what type of computer you have. And then once you have it connected, this button down here is going to pop up. So to just go to that screen, I'm just going to tap that HDMI button and it's going to display the content that's on my computer. And then I can manipulate it from my computer on here. Then to go back to the Vibe board, you're just going to swipe up, tap on that HDMI icon again, and you can go back to the content that's on the whiteboarding screen. So that, that this is a nice option because it'll park your computer right there so you can kind of switch back and forth until you disconnect. Um, so this is great because it'll support all the PowerPoint or Keynote um, applications. You can easily switch back, um, but it does not support split screen. It's only full screen mode when you're using HDMI. It might be a little bit more stable than wirelessly casting. So this might, again, be a good option if you're doing like a live stream or webinar and just wanna make sure you don't lose connection for any reason. Um, and then you must control the presentation from your device unless you have a micro USB cable. So a micro USB would be a secondary cable, so you do HDMI in and micro USB if you want a touchback functionality um, using cords. So hopefully that helped with um, figuring out which option is gonna work best for your presentations. I wanna talk a little bit about tips for using Vibe with video conferencing applications. So um, we integrate with tons of different third-party applications. These are some of our top video conferencing ones. But keep in mind, all of our third-party applications are the mobile versions of these platforms. So what this, the, how this will affect you as a presenter is if you have a camera attached to the Vibe board, you can attach one to the USB ports in the back, when you go to share your screen, it's actually gonna turn off your video. So what I recommend for presentations is actually um, logging into the same Zoom meeting or WebEx meeting or whatever you're using from another computer and attaching your camera to that computer so that it's pointing at the board. Then you're gonna log into the same Zoom meeting from the Vibe, but not connect to audio, because otherwise you're gonna get that bad echo. So you log in two places, just one for audio, and then you'll use this to share your screen, and then that way your camera won't turn off. People can always see you and hear you um, as you're presenting. We have a help article on this in our help center that has a detailed step-by-step -step of how to set this up um, if you want to learn a little bit more about our recommended camera setup. And moving on, 
tips for remote collaboration. For so, that, so for those of you that are advanced Vibe users or you're doing maybe a workshop um, with this presentation and you want people to collaborate with you that might be remote, Vibe is a great option to do that from the Canvas. So anybody can create a Vibe Canvas account. Um, you just need to have a Google or Microsoft email. You can also invite people to join you anonymously. So if someone didn't want to create an account but you wanted to collaborate with them, you can also invite them in as an anonymous editor. The devices that can use our software are going to be other Vibe boards. Um, you can also access our application on any web browser. So just you go to app.vibe.us. Uh, we typically recommend using Chrome. And then we also have an app for iPads. So that can be fun if someone has an iPad to kind of sketch with their Apple Pencil and, and come along. So to do that, you're going to go up here to share. And you can either invite people in by email if they have a Vibe account or down here when you go to share via link, you can check this option to allow for anonymous editors, copy that and put that in the calendar invitation or put it into the chat on the video conferencing application. So it's a little bit easier to share this link maybe ahead of time from the web app. So that's it for doing presentations for Vibe. Thanks so much for watching and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions on how to do presentations. Thanks so much.